<laughs> what do you have to say, Mom? <laughs> She's dying. <laughs> She's yeah, a lost for words with one of the times in my life that I've noticed her. All right, friend, that's enough. <laughs> time to eat now. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to eat, friend. It's enough. <laughs> and Mary Ellen wanted to know where the guest of honor was going to sit. <laughs> no, Mary Ellen. Oh, Mary Ellen. We have two Mary Ellen's here tonight. Anthony, anything to say? Hey, Greg. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mary Ellen? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, everyone's hey, pretty silent. Have... Maybe we'll wait to after no dinner. Tell them more why. You want to know? Everybody is. I'd like to wish Fran a very happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. And we hope she has fifty more. And Tony's sleeping with an old lady. There you go, Sam. How old are you, Fran? Fifty. When her birthday yeah. arrives on the 12th, then right. we will wish her yeah, happy birthday. Yeah, that's right. right. She's just a young Tonight, chick now. she's a young, 49 year old. Well, she's but by the time you hear this tape, we gotta be honest. Well, what? Well, well, she's by the time you hear this tape, we gotta be honest. Well, she's by the time you hear this tape, we gotta be honest. Don't go to tell me there. I don't feel like hey, getting a birthday. You look pretty good for 50. She looks darn good for 50. She looks okay for 55. For your happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Francis. Dad, don't help. No, 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 no. Do it, Mom. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I thought she was five years old today. No, you want to run out of breath, friend. I know. I mean, 30 candles is a lot. Now, did the cake come from... This is a little creme de la creme. Oh my god, they have Well, it's not creme de la creme anymore. Well, right, but. Which one? The one that's. Two years of fire jacket. They sold the same. Right. 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 Oh, come on. Oh, tell us, Fran. It's okay. They're happy, healthy grandchildren. Who's the Bills Tell me how they can have it. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Who's the Bills win next year, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you got it, Cher. You didn't win. Uh, she's wishing. Hey, no, that was a real deal. Oh, yeah. I got a bet with somebody. The Super Bowl's at our house next year. Next door. Yeah, she's wishing. 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 Just say no to drugs. Say no to the Super Bowl party. <laughs> <laughs> say no. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 However, we do have a few stories. I know you do. Is this appropriate time to start? I think you yeah. should. Oh, oh, I'm as I am. <laughs> <laughs> I have my notes on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Oh, it's good to be here. I have, a, I have a long prologue. You can watch the video. Conservative groups, so I figure someone's got to kick it off. <laughs> <laughs> and who better than you?
Jackie Well, with my smooth Chicago accent, I'm going to give him my best shot. Did you hear that? Yeah. Smooth Chicago accent. I said with my smooth, universal accepted accent. The perfect language, right? I didn't say that. You did. Thank you very much. Well, you told me first. <laughs> As you all know, where's Tony? Okay, Mom. Well, <laughs> <and we got. laughs> He's in the library. All right, okay. He can watch the TV. All right. Watch all right. Wow. You hear the balloons from the incest? Close the door. I don't know. Honey, this cake. Where are you going? Where are you I chose to be in Rochester. Right. My friend Rob. The human. And I went to the graduate breaks, graduation party. I never saw so many beavers in my life. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I can say is I said to Rob, I never was around as many important people that need to be deep. Really. <laughs> I'm impressed you guys know as many people that need to be deep. I mean, my husband is a computer programmer, and he almost never gets beat. Nobody beats him. Nobody beats him. Well, I guess that I'm important enough. <laughs> But they were hanging off everybody's pocket. This is a joke party, and it was amazing. But Everybody Sally, had one. I said, were you ever disappointed? You were disappointed. You have one? Do you have one? You know what it cost them to rent 47 people for that party? It cost them about 300 bucks. I don't know. Just, just a rental fee for those people. I went to take it. Those suckers went off all at once. It could have been something. It could be like an air raid drill. That's right. <laughs> I was impressed. Everybody had one hanging off their back pocket. You hear different beepers and alarms and go after in the Rochester's the beeper capital of the world. Must be. I remember the canopy crashing in on somebody. Well now we have we have vibrators now. The vibrators and vibrators. I'm not touching that one. In Boston we have another vibrator serving the front. <laughs> you don't hear oh. I have a vibrator too. I don't think you use yours the same way. Probably not, Marty. Yeah. I have this thing that we put on my neck. It vibrates my neck. You're talking about oh. Oh. instead of <laughs> you're, you're a, a beeper and vibrates it instead yeah. of making a sound. It makes you. I'll pass on that one. Give me a demonstration. Yeah. Jerry, you should show it. Okay. Let's see it. 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 Let's see are you getting us on tape, Anthony? Every second. Oh, bummer. Well, wait a minute. Lights that up. You're live. Mr. Weinthor is live. Hey! Saturday Night Live! Saturday Night Live! Hey, Weinthor! I got notes. I'm accustomed as I am to public speaking. I have my notes. Oh, Frank and Francis, thank you. Let's hear it for Frank and Francis on video. Yay! Well, listen, as you all know, we've lived next door to these wonderful people for 147 years. <laughs> Seems like that, doesn't it? Long time. Fran is Mrs. In Control. I mean, nothing gets out of her. I mean, she is smooth and sympathetic and all that, right? But she does slip in a humorous vein. I've got one story to tell. This goes back about, I want to say, six or eight years ago. <coughs> No, no. No, 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 no. way of living. It's already done the budget story. It's taking a nervous. No, 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 no. <laughs> 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 Out of film, Laura? Oh, it's right. Everybody's got a beaver. <laughs> Everybody's got a beaver, right. OK. Yeah. Uh, 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 I got to use my deodorant. <laughs> Anyways, Fran is, has been a super neighbor. I mean this sincerely, right? And I know how you love to come over and visit Marty and talk about plants and swim in our pool because she loves to swim. She is just, you know, she just loves to swim. I mean, she's a real, you know, uh, who? Esther Williams. Okay. She's really not. But anyway, 
I'm working out there in the garage one day in the summertime, and I'm sweating and straining. And uh, Tony is out there raking leaves, and Frank is over there. You know what the story is, but let me tell it. And anyways, uh, they're they're out there struggling and raking and Frank. <coughs> Dear, don't you think you ought to chop the wood? Come on, that's, that's a little inside joke. Anyways, I'm installing this garage door opener, the automatic garage door opener. It's got all the hardware and all that stuff in there. I'm working alone, and Marty's tending to the kids or whatever. And Fran comes over to visit or take a swim, whatever she's doing. She sees my plight, and I am, am struggling this thing. I'm sweaty and everything. And, she goes over next door after leaving my scene in the garage and says to Frank and Tony, she says, oh, Dick is having a tough time getting it up. Why don't you go over there and hold it up for him? It is so long that he can't do it by himself. <laughs> do, re do you remember? Do you remember? Did I quote you correctly, Francis? I hope I did. You had to be there to see it, but let your imagination run away with you. It is so funny. I love it. It's funny. I forgot about it. They ran right over. Well, no, they cracked up and they came over. We all cracked up, had a beer, I think. Whatever. But I, I'll tell you, going back over 20 some odd beautiful years with you guys as neighbors, we helped them. We helped them. That was probably the. We helped them get it up. Yeah. Frank Bernal said, I gotta go see this. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go see this. <laughs> anyway, you guys have been wonderful neighbors and we wouldn't want anybody else there. I, I, I thought of 20 years of funny stories, but that was the funniest thing. <laughs> I really forgot about that. Remember that one? You knew it when I, when I started. Let's see it. Frank. Uh, yeah. We went to Fran and Tony, and all the kids, in fact, we went to uh, a place called Taos, New Mexico. Oh, yes. We went skiing there. In fact, it, it, you may have seen the poster in their house. Yes. Yeah. And uh, when we uh, arrived, and we had a whole week. Well, I had the flowers. Hi, Francis. Hi, Francis. The flowers are in front of me now. So uh, we had a, a great week. Uh, skiing and uh, visiting uh, New Mexico and various areas and then it was time to leave so we piled into a station wagon or a van or something like that and we went to the airport in, in uh, is it San, San uh, uh, El Paso? Al Al Albuquerque. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Albuquerque. So we, the Albuquerque airport was under construction and they had, <laughs> they had a sign here that says no parking and we had 30 pieces of luggage, and, and, and we had the, the skis. So we pulled up right over there, and, and not anywhere near. So we had to get a, a, a sky cap or something to get all these 30 pieces of luggage, including skis and trunks and everything. In the mud. In the mud. We're trying to get a sky cap. Tony says, I'll go get a sky cap. The cops come over. <clears throat> no parking over here. <laughs> well, you know how quiet Fran can be, right? <laughs> you should have seen her. What do you mean, no parking? We have to get on the airplane! <laughs> we have a car over here! We, what kind of airport is this? We looked at Fran, we said, who's this person? I don't know something like that. Now Tony's going like this. Shut up! And gave Tony a ticket. And he got a ticket. <laughs> well, I thought it was the car that he said that I didn't know he was a security. <laughs> she laid this guy out on the security person. I never saw anybody lay it out and laugh at her like that. She was really mean. Cup, it was so impossible. impossible. I know, but <laughs> it was terrible. Really you were justified in what you said. She, 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 was, was, she was stressed she out. She was, but he gave you a ticket, ticket he said. I gotta ask you a question. When Tony said shut up, did he say shut up? Here? Oh, you go shut up, shut up here. No, no shut up here. here. No, he said here. Like he might have. He always says here. <laughs>
Well, tell the story, Rob. Tell the story well, in, in brief to... form. That one, I have a different one. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, the one thing that tickles my heart, you know my affection for cats. <laughs> Everybody remembers because they're probably sailing. Spotty. Oh, and Spotty. Beautiful yeah. Spotty. <laughs> <laughs> and when I lived in Ithaca, a lot of times Friday was my day off, and I would come up, and then this is when Graham was only working slightly. Yeah, we would come, I would stop by the house, and we would have breakfast together, and then Graham would go off to work. But this one occasion, during the winter months, she was bringing brownies to school for somebody's birthday, I think. And of course, Fran, who, you know how punctual she is, always on time, <laughs> was running a little bit late, and the old Pyrex dish was behind schedule in the oven. So she wanted to cool down the brownies to cause it to take to school. Still need to do shower and dress, whatever. So she's going to take them out on the back deck and put them in the snow bay to cool down while she was getting ready for school. And then when she came out afterwards to pick up the Pyrex dish, it was hard to remove it. Finally, she lifted it up as it sifted down from the snow. Cemented to the bottom of the Pyrex dish were mementos of Spotty's bowel movement. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Oh, oh, and it's Brian is telling me, I said, Oh my God, what'd you do? She said, Well, I cut the brownies and took them to school. <laughs> and I thought, I'm the cat lover. Oh, I don't really appreciate that. You know, I didn't like Spotty the brownies at all. Sure, Mom, sure. Well, I don't know. I thought that was funny. Well, Spotty had departed. Well, oh, it's right, Spotty was gone by Spotty then. This is the leftover. This is a little memento. It's right, I forgot. It made it more touching. It's his right. He said he wanted to touch it. You see, he was sick and, and he didn't go out in the woods and you know go to his, his own private location, so consequently he was just going on the jacket. And Spatty Dog was been an outdoor night kid. He was always on night Because Tony always kicked always him out every night. <laughs> yep. That's right. <laughs> I'll tell you, our mole population went up by 40% when Spatty, Spatty was so good. Spatty, Spatty was, was a, a good hawker yeah. at night. He kept the mole population down. Yeah, he was an unusual animal. Yeah, yeah as long as the snow melted, he had Spatty momentum. He was an unusual animal. <laughs> <end. laughs> Greg, you're on. When I was young, I didn't uh, have a whole lot of parties in the house. I mellowed out. I didn't uh, have Come on. But you got kind of a straight ahead kind of, straight ahead kind of kid. Um, but one thing I did learn from my mom, and that, that is uh, to be very neat and thorough. Oh, I know what he's got to say. I know what he's got to say. Very neat and thorough, and uh, if you want to get anything by her, you've got to be very careful. <laughs> Cover all your tracks, so to speak. I, I mean, all your tracks. <laughs> if she could find anything, any little teeny piece that was wrong with your story or whatever you're trying to do. So one week, uh, my parents and my brother went to Minnesota to visit the McCollins, I believe. And, there. and uh, that's when I chose to have the blowout that I, that I never had when I was uh, younger. Good for you. Plotted it out. I said, I'm going to have a party. So I waited until my seen me up on the plane. That's right. You saw my dad up and promptly uh, called up my buddies and uh, made the arrangements to get uh, the appropriate beverage over to the yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The princess, appropriate beverage. Well, beforehand, I was very nervous. I said, well, geez, i got to get all the, the furniture, make sure no one touches the furniture or anything like that. She'll catch anything. I've got to really watch my <laughs> so what I did is I took my Polaroid camera I had at the time and went around the house and 
took about 30 or so odd snapshots of where everything was. Oh, no. And the main thing I really had to worry about was the Yadro sandwiches. Trying to show up. And she had, I'd say, about a dozen figures on the glass top table, and I said, oh, gosh, I got to move these out of the way, but I, I'll never get them back in the same spot. And my grandmother's going to come in. She'll know if it that, yeah, that's coming up. You didn't think of that. Oh, but she but, uh, did. That's coming later. For so I took, I took many snapshots of every single pose they were in. It was real meticulous and tried to be real careful about it. I love that. And, uh, <laughs> anyway, the party, the party kind of went on the schedule here. We had to be careful of uh, a certain... Uh, family that lived next door to us, the wine fellers. They were sitting on the front porch. Although I have to say this. I, I, I was just not, off I wasn't well, invited. <laughs> now at the time, I, I have to say that they uh, they did not volunteer to be my uh, policeman, but somehow they just expected of them. And every time that my parents went away, I can watch the boys. <laughs> I want you to know, we Pardon. never read it on you. Your grandmother I, I Believe me. <laughs> 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 That's going up. This is my thing. Don't believe me. Anyway, I was careful just to keep the white flowers out of it. I, I made sure I, I had my friend over, made sure it was in the garage. We had tried to hit tie the car and all that. <laughs> anyway, it didn't work out. Uh, somehow, Mrs. Weintheller knew that there was something going on. No, your grandmother called. Oh, did she call? Yes. Oh, all right, you're right. She my called me. I called you. And it was a, of course, it was a oh, blue. I was supposed to be at work. I told my grandmother I was supposed to be at work. Out of the blue, she called up. And someone strange answered the phone with my friends, and, and then she called you, and then you right. came over. Right. Anyway, the whole thing went sour, and it was, it was really <laughs> it went weird. south and real fun. <laughs> I still had an L, you know, I, the party really at that point had gotten underway, so I was kind of, I thought I was safe, so I'm not, you know, I'm okay. So anyway, uh, I'll go to one of my, my parents got home. My parents got home, my mom, and she looks in the, in the dining room, and she's looking at the Andros, which I meticulously, I collected all the Andros and put them, the same place, and I put them all back according to the picture. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I was really careful. She takes one look at the Yadros and she says, You were at a party, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I swore up and I did not have a party. What do you mean? I did not have a party. You know, I'm thinking, there's no way she didn't notice any one of those missing. She says, You were at a party. Finally, she got a right at a party. How did you know? How? She, she always says, knows. And there was one little figure. <laughs> a little wire cane. The wire cane was missing. The angel. And I was like, what do you mean? So anyway, the wire cane was somehow missing and she spotted it right away and she knew it. I gotta tell you something that you don't more know. To it. There's a lot more to it than that. But I gotta tell you something version. you don't remember about that night. What's that? Your grandmother did call her house because your mom and dad and Greg were out to visit them. Um, Collins, yeah, they were from Mary's wedding. Your grandmother called and said, is everything okay over there? And I said, well, everything looks okay. Anthony just drove in and Dick and her had a drink on the front porch. And she said, Anthony just came in? I said, yeah, he's got a couple of friends. Everything looks all right. And she said, oh, well, you just keep an eye on it. I'll call you back in a few minutes. supposed to be working. And she did. And then, then when she called back, I said, well, there's a few more friends. Right? She said, Frank and I will be there momentarily. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they were. In a few minutes. Oh, oh, oh. At that time, they had come in the house. Exactly. Whatever party you were trying to do was gone. Now, they, they eventually home. went home again, right? Then they the went home again. Yeah, they, they eventually went home, right? They went home again. It's hard this, to this, believe. Is, this, is, this is the really wonderful thing about it, Anthony. <laughs> she called me up. I can't remember if it was 5 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock. <laughs> And she said, Marty, I keep thinking about something. I walked in the house, and I don't remember seeing those shadows on the table. <laughs> and I, she said, do you? And I said, I didn't guess I didn't look. She said, something's fishy. <laughs> <laughs> so she came over. She said, I'll be there the next morning. She said, I'll be there the next morning. I went with her. They were all right where they were supposed to be. She said, maybe I dreamed it. <laughs> and it wasn't until a while later that we realized that you had photographed them and put them back in the But I did it. I couldn't do it. Anyway, it's Andy. It's Angela. Tony, the poor guy, is flying in the air. Greg, Brianna, and I are already in Minneapolis. Of course, the news comes. 
and We're she is hamstring. Oh, oh my god, oh my god, you know what's going in. I said, do me a favor. Tony was coming. What time was he coming? Like good. late good. at night. I yeah. said, do not greet him at the airport and bombard him with this. I said, wait until tomorrow morning. Just promise us all. Wait till tomorrow morning. Why? But she did she not. Didn't she didn't went to bed. Rand couldn't wait to stay up. <laughs> 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 no, wait a minute. We go up in the room and she says, There's something to tell you. Worry, worry. All right, so we're going to go to bed. There's something to tell you, you know. <laughs> Anthony, you know, party. <laughs> <laughs> I never gone. Never even got off the ground. Never. I said he what? That's the farthest I got. He had a party. What are you gonna? What are you gonna do about it? We gotta talk to him. And uh, you know, my mother says the Yadros are missing. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Minneapolis. I'm going to get many parties. You see, I got to try to get a party. Who needs to shut up? Who cares about the Yadros? I'll see what it's tomorrow morning. You can't fix it tonight. Let it fly. Now, the McCollins girls are, you know, they're hearing the story. Go, Anthony. They were. They were. They were. Go, Anthony. I can remember a couple times when we were with you one time when you found out that they had a party. And I don't remember if it was when we were in Smuckers or what. Oh, and their kids didn't have so many. Oh, yeah, that was the time when Gregory had a party. Party, that was, oh, that I was out of here. How did you, you, you're unbelievable. Are, you're unbelievable. You're, unbelievable. you're too much. We were, you are too much. Listen, we were the designated snitches. Listen, you were the designated snitches. Listen, you were the designated snitches. Listen, we were the designated snitches. Dick and Marty. That's right. That's right. We were the policemen of the well, neighborhood. Speaking of neighborhood parties, I have something to say very quickly. Oh, no. Um, and the flowers over the party. Fran and I have, yes, I want those flowers. Francis says, yeah. listen. And Frank. If I have flowers, I'll speak. Fran <laughs> and I have been neighbors, friends, and buddies, and sharers of motherhood. <laughs> for 20 years. Now, we made an agreement many years ago, Fran, that when you and Tony go away, we watch out for your house and your kids. And when Dick and I go away, we watch out for our house and our kids. And there was only one time that I remember you disappointing me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. No, I, oh. Have to, I, have, I have to fully admit, I think this is correct, and, and Gregory and Anthony can tell me if this is true. I think the Weinfeller children probably had many more parties, many more types of parties than the Prairie Boys ever tried to do. Right? And, and I guess... Yeah. Any doubt in there? Oh, no. They're so... Nope. And the Prairie Boys, and the Prairie Boys <laughs> came to the Weinfeller house to party with our kids. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Don't bring that anything up. <laughs> Mother knows all. <laughs> Anyhow, there was, there was one time that Fran wasn't totally honest with me in a timely way. Um, and I can't remember exactly the time, but I do remember it was two weeks after Dick and I got home from wherever we had been and left our children at home. And I was just having a cup of coffee with Fran in her kitchen, and she got around to this part of the conversation that said, Marty? I don't know what the kids were doing going in and out the windows in the second floor out of the roof of the bread. I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, when I walked in the kitchen, there was beer in there, and I didn't see anything about it. But later, I saw them going in and out the windows on the second floor onto the grass roof. I said, man, I've been home two weeks. What are you telling me? I said, well, I really didn't want to tell you this. I said, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? This is the second. This is the second story roof now. This is not. Oh second, yeah. This is Over the garage. Not the garage. Not the garage. Yeah, it's a, uh, oh, you know, you know the patio area of your house. <laughs> I mean, we're you, talking you know, second story job here. Do you know why she waited that long to tell me? I'm not sure either. I can't remember. I think either she was afraid I was going to go for.